I'm at Cranford Downs Farm in North Canterbury and this lot are just about to check their traps for feral cats. Is it pretty easy to trap these cats? To be fair, it's probably the best way to get them because they're such a stealthy animal, you don't usually see them, you know? You set a trap and um, you're bound to get one. Does that sound like... They've found the cat. They've found the cat? That's the cage. North Canterbury farmer Matt Bailey has invited me out with his family and the neighbour's kids hunting feral cats. Yeah, you can tell it's actually a really sort of angry kind of animal. Oh, they are, yeah. They're pretty psychotic. This is not a domestic cat. No, no, no. You know, nobody's going to mistake this. No. It's a big, angry, yep. wild animal. What do the words feral cat mean to you? Basically a destructive, feral, nasty predator, you know. And the apex predator is the issue. Nothing else hunts it, we've got to do our part. And that's a, about as humane way of killing as you can get. Instant. Instant. Right, yeah. Didn't hear the yeah. bang. Lights out. Matt's an organiser of the North Canterbury Hunting Competition, a community-run fundraiser for the Rotherham School and Pool. But after public backlash, they withdrew the category for children to hunt feral cats. How have you found the attitude of some townies to your kids hunting cats? We've copped the, you know, the backlash about it, but our kids have grown up hunting, you know, gathering. They're just so used to it, you know. We're out there shooting the possums and the, and the rabbits, you know. A cat's going to go down if we see one too, because it's, it's feral, it's wild, and it shouldn't be here. We're going to take the side of our native species, you know. I haven't been, a, haven't heard a tui, you know, in the bush around here for years, or had a wood pigeon barrel on past, you know, when I'm walking through it. Does it surprise you that feral cats aren't in predator-free 2050? Yeah, that's just madness. I, I don't know how we're going to be predator-free if they're not. Just down the road is a nesting spot for the critically endangered black-fronted tern. There's as little as 5,000 of them left. We had 17 nests here last year, all uh, taken over by cats. All Rats. taken out by cats? All taken out, yep. No survival at all. Dave McKenzie is part of a volunteer conservation group. They've caught feral cats on camera, killing these birds and eating their eggs. We're probably five to 10 k's away from the nearest house. Um, these aren't the cats that that sit on the sofa at night. These are cats that are, live in the wild. A lot of time, effort, money and resources goes into these birds. They can actually finish the whole nesting season just, you know, one, two cats. That's, that's all it takes. Down at Rotherham, the hunting competition is underway. The crowds have gathered, but not everyone is into it. Why is it a competition? Why is it glorified if it's trying to conserve trying to conserve wildlife, conserve nature. Is there a better way than this that is neutering, trapping, neutering, returning to nature? Those here to hunt have come in their droves, bringing in hundreds of deer, possum, wild pigs and plenty of feral cats. Oh, these are whoppers. Yeah, they look like down here. Whoa. That's a big cat. Well, it's nearly bigger than Archie, isn't it? Like, if you go side by side, these are this all, is in all one, in one location. One location. One location. I mean, the native animal comes within cooey of this and it's all over. That's right, yeah. They're out of control? They're out of control. They're out of control. They're out of control. So a lot of these birds around the South Island are tracked, and when they're found dead, we can send DNA samples off to find out what predator has killed them. 50% of those birds are killed by feral cats. Wow, and those cats, how big are we talking? They can get up to seven kilos, potentially more. So the cats roam pretty high? They do, yep. There's no limit really to how high they go. Uh, so they'll climb over ridges up to the peaks of a lot of the mountains. Sadly, they're built to hunt. They've got lots of incredible features that make them incredible predators. They're really, really stealthy. Uh, they've got incredible hearing, eyesight, being nocturnal as well. A lot of New Zealand species uh, come out at night, so pretty efficient hunters. Sorry, just to interrupt. The cage is actually just here. It's sprung, but um, there's nothing in there. 
how much harder is it to catch cats than the other pest species that you're trapping? I'd say it's a lot harder because they are so wary. They're curious animals, but they're also um, quite wary of anything new. So a big metal cage might look really different to them. It is a huge process. Lots of planning where to put the cages, what to bait them with. I guess, what, what is it that brings you out here? Why do you do this? Because killing cats is not a pleasant thing to have no, to do. I'd love it if I didn't have to, honestly. I love cats. You know, no conservationist goes into this, this kind of work because we love killing things. But we've brought these mammals in and we need to do something because we're losing species, we're losing them very quickly. I think the door's open from what I can see, which means we've caught nothing. Oh, no, door is down. So we'll have to go and investigate. So that means there might be something there in there? There might be something in there, yes. So we'll head over quietly. There's a little possum. Right, so what, what are you going to do now? Um, so I'll have to dispatch him. You know, you, you think this is quite benign work. Helen Blackie is a predator ecologist. She's studied feral cats around the country for over 20 years. Today, she's on the outskirts of South Auckland, setting up cameras to monitor the different types of predators in the area. So how many possums are there around here versus feral cats? 10, 15 years ago, I would say way more possums than feral cats. In the last few years, what we're seeing now in some sites is at least equal numbers and um, there are some sites where we've been doing research where we've picked up more feral cats on cameras. Do we have enough data on the impact of feral cats on our biodiversity? Not to the extent that it needs to be. What's become apparent over the years is a lot of groups that are making really great efforts to control key pest species are really scared to add feral cats to that list of species they're controlling. And what they're concerned about is as soon as they start mentioning that they want to control cats, people will say, well, hang on, you know, I'm not supportive of that. I'm worried about my pet cat. So we know how bad ferrets, stoats, rats, possums are. How do feral cats compare? Definitely just as bad. In some, some circumstances, probably worse. They can kill 10 to 20 prey items within a day. Feral cats kill approximately 100 million native species a year. So we are detecting feral cats up in the beaches of Northland. We're detecting feral cats in urban parkland and up in the Murchison Mountains. The feral cats are right across New Zealand. The team at Southern Lake Sanctuary trap cats all around central Otago. We know that cats don't like to be out and about in the cold and wet. This is the first fine weather they've had in ages. So we're heading out again and Chrissy and the team are hoping they'll have better luck today. What do you tell people about what you do? Is that difficult? Yeah, when out in the field, for example, if hikers ask, you know, what are you doing? I sort of try and gauge whether they are familiar with pest control before even talking about the cat situation. Wow, so you really have to kind of warm people up to the cat's topic. Exactly, which can be quite tricky. Tell me about what the goal is, what you're working towards. Really excitingly, we are planning to release takahe up here. Um, so we need to do as much predator control work that we can, in particular with feral cats, um, to give them the best chance when they are released. Do you think about that when you're out here and you're doing this work, you know, just how special that is to yes, release a species, a Taonga species, back into this part of the country? Oh, it really is. And it just gives us a goalpost, you know, something to work towards. Imagine walking one of our great walks in New Zealand and just coming across one. It just, it's amazing, especially in this area where they haven't been for, for centuries. So the door on this cage is down um, and so we're just going to slowly and quietly walk over to see uh, if we have caught anything. I've already loaded the gun so it can be a really quick process. There's some movement okay, in the so, trap there. So we do have a cat. Yep. 
Um, so I'm just going to head over there. Even, and even though you know that that's necessary, that is really hard to watch. And how do you feel in that in that moment? It, it's hard, yep, really hard. Um, but what's really good too is I know that I care about the animal's welfare. So the fact that it's in my hands, um, yeah, it makes it makes it a little bit more comfortable because I want it to be as quick as possible. So what do you do now that you've dispatched of the cat? Um, so I'm just going to check to see if it's male or female for our records. If it's a female, uh, we'll most likely leave it close to the cage, uh, just buried in the leaf litter on the ground here. Um, and that will hopefully entice males to come in. Um, so the scent of her will bring them in, which then uh, will hopefully pop, they'll, they'll go into the cage. And we've had about 40 cats in this area. Wow, just in this small area, 40? Yep goes to show how many there actually are out there and um, we're actually about to come up to a cage shortly we've actually got another cat yeah there's another cat in there wow so two cats that you've caught within a couple of hundred meters yep. really just shows the scale of the problem you guys are dealing with yeah it does and it shows projects like us need to be around to carry on with this work yeah well I'll let you get on with it okay thank you I know, I'm sorry. So Lou, do you want to tell me about where we are? Well, this is Blanket Bay and uh, the people that own here, here have just a vision of restoring farmland to nature. And this is what you can do in 10 years of planting to bring back birds. Part of that vision is to try to keep all predators at bay. Predators including feral cats. Despite that, there are signs of feral cats everywhere. So there we go, there's a cat poo or a scat. Uh, and you can tell it because the little white bits sticking out, those are the, the quills, the end of the, the feathers. That's probably a fantail. Lou Sanson was in charge of DOC in 2017 when the government decided not to include feral cats in its goal to wipe out predators by 2050. Predator free is the greatest benefit that New Zealand could ever have to its balance sheet if we could actually get rid of rats, stoats, possums and, and in my view cats. Um, it would completely change the nation. And you say in my view cats, it's not everyone's view. No, well... Um, New Zealand's got one of the highest cat owner per person in the world. And if you're creating a movement, the last thing you want to do is take on this huge movement that, that supports cats. This support has resulted in conservation groups being too scared to publicly tackle the feral cat problem. As a result, there are huge funding and knowledge gaps. Shouldn't it be the Department of Conservation that's taking more leadership as Director General for DOC, I, I hold some responsibility as we were doing so much research on stoats, on rats and possums, but we're missing cats. We need to know the best baits, the best lures, the best type of traps, the best camera system. We need to know the most effective and efficient way of killing feral cats. And so going back to Predator Free 2050, why couldn't we just include cats? One of my frustrations was, was the inability to include cats in, in the predator-free movement. And what I was trying to work with with SPCA is to understand that this movement to bring back birds to New Zealand is, is, is as strong, if not stronger, than the ability to own a cat. And can we bring these two together? I did have some incredibly good dialogue with SPCA chief executives. I got really frustrated by this trap neuter release program when I think these cats are doing so much damage so we have to take it on. How long have you had him, the dog? So I've had him for six years. Anya Dale is the SPCA's Chief Scientific Officer. 
She took over the position just after the decision was made to exclude cats from Predator Free 2050. Did, did SPCA at that time allow emotion to get in the way of making a decision? <laughs> so I've been in my role as a Chief Scientific Officer for um, what, seven and a half years now. Um, so I can categorically say since that time, um, everything has been evidence-based, everything has, has supporting research behind it. It is possible. Um, historically, yes, but, but certainly not um, in the current framework. So does the SPCA support the humane killing of feral cats? Where it's justified, yes we do. What does that mean, where it's justified? Well, we're very careful around the wording that we use. Our ultimate goal is that all cats are cats on laps. Our ultimate goal is that we don't have any stray cats in New Zealand and we don't have any feral cats in New Zealand. That's a journey, a long-term mm. journey, um, and we need other tools to manage our other mm. types of cats in Just New in terms of the conversation here, what are the things that you're having to sort of skirt around? Well, I think it's because um, when you start talking about humane cat management, sometimes people take a polarised view around that. We support the right outcomes for all species. Okay, so just to be clear, the SPCA does support humane killing of feral cats? Absolutely, we do. We support that. Everywhere? Feral cats. Mm. Yes, feral cats, that's the right outcome. Melissa, do you agree that feral cats are a threat to our native wildlife wherever it may be? The general message is, is that we know that feral cats are a, um, an issue, do pose a threat to our native species and I think that's a conversation um, and an education process that we need to have with Aotearoa, with the, with the New Zealand public. Why aren't feral cats in Predator Free 2050? When they developed the first strategy, the feedback from the public at that time um, was uh, possums, rats, stoats, mustelids. It, was not, um, it did not include cats. There was strong feedback from the public at that time that it shouldn't include um, cats. However, in 2024, we begin the process of reviewing that strategy. And if the public say, feral cats are not special, feral cats need to die to save our native species, then that's what the department will do? So I can't predetermine um, the outcome of that process, but certainly my understanding is that the feedback that we receive from the public um, will be very informative in terms of the decision. And the SPCA have said they would be happy with the humane removal of feral cats anywhere in New Zealand. Does that sort of start to open things up, do you think? Well, certainly I would expect they will be um, one of the groups that would um, perhaps look to participate in that review and provide that feedback. And, um, you know, it's something that they may uh, wish to share uh, with other people because that could have been some of the reasons people didn't feel it was appropriate. So long story short, mm. Kiwis are going to get to have a say on whether feral cats are included in, in, included in Predator Free 2050. That's right. Kiwis are going to be able to participate um, in the review of the Predator Free 2050 strategy on whether it should include feral cats or not. Yeah. And that review will start in 2024.